Good morning, everybody. It is Monday. It is Monday. Oh, it's Monday. Oh, <laughs> I want to apologize that this video is getting uploaded uploaded so late. Uh, my wife told me last night right before bed, oh, don't you remember we have to go to the doctor at 8.30 tomorrow morning? And I said, no, I did not remember that. <laughs> um, so I was like, all right, I'll get up early and I'll post the video before we go to the doctor. And uh, I did not have enough time to post the video before we went to the doctor. And uh, the reason we had a doctor's appointment, which maybe if you could guess, since me and my wife both went to the doctor, is that there is a small baby in her tummy. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, we've known about it for a while, but yeah, we, we've had a few doctor's appointments. And so yeah, I think that's the first time I've mentioned it on the channel. So that's exciting. That is exciting. Soon to be father here. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, but yeah, anyway. Um, yeah, interesting news today. Kind of, we got some uh, follow ups on some stories we've been following. Uh, it looks like Bitcoin is looking very bullish. Price has been pumping. Ethereum ETF uh, volume has been kind of just going down. Uh, no surprises really there. Um, but yeah, so let's jump into it. Record $39.4 billion Bitcoin open interest suggests imminent price breakout. So Bitcoin futures open interest has reached a new all-time high, suggesting that investor demand for the world's largest cryptocurrency is increasing. Could a price breakout be imminent? Bitcoin open interest, a metric monitoring the total number of open positions in the underlying asset, has reached an all-time high of $39.46 billion across all exchanges. The current figure surpasses the previous all-time high of $39 billion reached on March 29th. Interesting, and I believe that was the last time Bitcoin had a nice pump was back in March. So, Bitcoin's open interest is used by traders to gauge the interest and liquidity behind the asset. The current $39 billion peak shows increased investor interest in Bitcoin, which may precede a breakout toward new record highs. The new record high in open interest paired with other indicators suggests that Bitcoin price could be on track to break out to new all-time highs. Notably, over 75% of Bitcoin short-term holders were in profit as of July 24th. This could translate into more upward momentum for Bitcoin since the short-term short cohort <laughs> is often used to gauge retail demand for Bitcoin. Interesting. Moreover, Bitcoin's growing dominance suggests that it will devour increasingly more of the total market cap, total crypto market capital capitalization, according to Benjamin Cowan. Apologies, I cannot speak today. <laughs> the CEO and founder of Into the Cryptoverse. Uh, that guy's always talk, saying that, no matter what. He's always talking about Bitcoin dominance. Um, but uh, yeah, so can Bitcoin price breach 71500 next? That is the next major price target uh, before a potential rally to new all-time highs. According to popular crypto analyst Rekt Capital. <laughs> so uh, that's a funny name for a crypto analyst, Rekt Capital. Um, don't know if we want to trust them that much. But uh, yeah, so Bitcoin is currently 5.8% down from its all-time high of 73,750 recorded on March 14th. Okay, so that all-time high was March 14th. And the last time we saw the last all-time high for the open Bitcoin futures open interest was March 29th. So that's interesting that that happened after the all-time high and it didn't send it to a new all-time high um, then. But yeah, so yeah, we're only 5.8% down from Bitcoin's all-time high. That's pretty crazy. That doesn't seem like much, you know. Um, and the U.S. spot Bitcoin ETF saw $795 million worth of cumulative net inflows during the previous week, marking the fourth consecutive week of net 
positive inflows according to Dune data. And you can see this chart. We can see the, the ETF net flows for Bitcoin. It looks like the first uh, two weeks was positive. Then we had a negative. Then we had a lot of weeks of positive. And this is January to March. You see all positive one, two, three, four, five, six, seven weeks in a row of positive. And that was when Bitcoin hit its all time high. And now then it had a, a big week of negative, three weeks of positive, three weeks of negative, five weeks of positive, and now we've had three weeks of negative. And as they said, we just had four consecutive weeks of positive inflows. So maybe Bitcoin will go on to break new all time highs in the short term. We will have to see. We will have to see. But uh, yeah, so cool stuff there and uh, a little story uh, just uh, to touch on security stuff uh, I had someone contact me you know if they're listening shout out to them um, and they had updated their treasure and when when the treasure finished updating their their wallet wasn't showing they couldn't see their funds it wasn't in metamask you know they had their treasure connected to metamask they couldn't see their funds in treasure suite so they were freaking out um, and they added their seed phrase to another treasure that they had in a box, uh, you know, brand new out the box. They, they took their seed phrase, added it to that treasure, put in their passphrase, and their money still wasn't showing. So they contacted me and I, you know, we, we ran through a few things and I said, unfortunately, anytime someone's ever had this issue. And if you look online, uh, on treasure and you, you can't find your wallet that you previously had access to, it is usually an issue with the seed phrase so you have the wrong seed phrase or you entered your passphrase wrong and this guy was pretty sure you know it was the right seed phrase it was the right passphrase uh, and eventually <clears throat> he figured out that he had one of his seed words written down incorrectly so just a lesson you know write down your seed phrase uh, multiple times make sure it's correct and if you're ever in a situation like this a uh, similar situation know that because I've dealt with people in a similar situation plenty of times and it's always it's always the passphrase or seed phrase is incorrect it's hardly ever well it's never been the fault of Trezor it's always been a user error so I mean it is Trezor's fault that after the update you know the the wallet wasn't there anymore so you had to like re-add it but just know uh, if you know you can't you can't access your wallet and it's not usually it's never been a treasure issue it's been a your passphrase is wrong or your seed phrase you put in the wrong word for your seed phrase so so yeah i thought that was an interesting story to share uh, and if you ever have security related issues or problems feel free to reach out to me on twitter or telegram that's usually where i'm most easily reached probably telegram is the best place to reach me um or drop a comment on youtube or whatever because I will do my best to help. But anyway, next article. Here's what happened in crypto today. So this is from two hours ago. So if I had done my video on time, we wouldn't have this article. So, uh, you know, there's a bright side to everything. Uh, so uh, it talks about what we just talked about. Record 39.4 billion Bitcoin open interest. Uh, and then here, crypto unlocks to reach over $1.5 billion in August. So nearly $1.5 billion in tokens for major crypto projects are set to be unlocked in August with 1 billion XRP tokens worth $609 million at current prices, making up a massive part of the month's total on August 1st. Ripple, the firm behind the XRP ledger in the native token XRP, has unlocked up to 1 billion tokens on the first day of every month since 2017. Oh my gosh. Uh, and usually... From what I understand, they actually are they sell on people's heads. <laughs> so that's one reason I I don't really I don't mind. I mean I know a lot of people like XRP. I don't really. Uh, so yeah, top seven token unlocks of the upcoming week. So Alt Layer ninety million dollars, Sui sixty two million dollars, Optimism fifty four million dollars, Zeta Chain thirty five million dollars, World Coin eleven million, Maverick Protocol ten million, DYDX ten million. <clears throat> so something to be aware of. Uh, some tokens like they have supply locked, and then the supply comes unlocked, and then sometimes that can lead to a dump in the price, whether because people are speculating about the token unlocked being dumped, or the actual tokens that are unlocked to get dumped. So. Yeah, 
Federal Reserve Board drops enforcement actions against Silvergate. And I think we actually talked about this the other day. Um, so the now defunct bank no longer faces regulatory action enforcement. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, interesting. Really not much news. I, I see this emoji, this emoji response down here. Uh, people are emoji responding to this article. And the most used emoji is a guy yawning. <laughs> and uh, I would agree, there's really not much news today, but I, we got some interesting stuff coming up. Uh, but uh, this next article, Solana increases revenue after flipping Binance coin. So looks like Solana has flipped Binance. And uh, it's funny, I was talking about this with some friends just yesterday, uh, <clears throat> how how Binance is kind of the, uh, was like the shit coin. <laughs> Binance was kind of the degenerate chain of last cycle. Uh, there was all kinds of meme coins and degenerate protocols, you know, offering tens of thousand percent of yield and kind of just like complex Ponzi nomics, as we say in crypto, Ponzi nomics, uh, you know, types of things. And uh, Binance has really fallen off this cycle. I don't really hear anyone talking about it. And the only person I knew who was, uh, you know, really big into Binance is a distant cousin of mine. And he recently told me that the protocol he really liked on Binance, they just moved to Solana. So um, Solana's kind of eating Binance, Binance chains lunch on a, in terms of you know, <laughs> degenerate coins, etc. Um, so, yeah, interesting stuff. I think CZ, the head of uh, head of Binance, he gets out of jail in like a little over a month. So maybe that will have some sort of bullish catalyst for Binance. Uh, but yeah, I don't really care for either of them. I don't have. I don't really do anything on Solana. I don't do anything on BNB, and I, if you do, uh, be very careful because it seems like it's just a lot of scamming going on over there. Now, a little update on the Wazir X hack. Uh, they surveyed users on recovery options after the. $230 million hack, and it has left customers and industry players fuming. The Indian crypto exchange has put out a fresh statement clarifying that the poll was not legally binding and was a preliminary step to understand customers' opinions. Yeah, I could go ahead and tell you without doing a survey that the opinion of all the customers is that they want their money back as soon as possible. <laughs> oh, gosh, so funny. Um... They've, uh, so Wazir X has faced heat after a withdrawal management poll after suffering the $230 million hack earlier this month. Um, so 43%, 45% of its user funds were taken in that hack. The $230 million hack, that was 45% of the user funds on the exchange. This is why it's super duper important to have your own hardware wallet not your keys, not your crypto, hold your crypto in a wallet that you control, preferably a hardware wallet like Trezor.io, that's my favorite. And a link to Trezor.io hardware wallet is in the description of the video, but let's see. Let's see what the deal is with the poll. So the July 27th poll described by the exchange as a socialized loss strategy to distribute the impact equitably among all users. Wow, they're really trying to hit the buzzwords with this one. <laughs> uh, ask customers to vote on two different options. Access 55% of your funds without withdrawals and get first priority for when potential recovery proceeds come or access 55% of your funds with withdrawals with second priority to potential recovery proceeds. So they're basically saying you can get 55% of your money back, but you can't take it off our exchange. So it's likely fake money. <laughs> That's <coughs> So it's likely fake crypto. It's them saying, here's your money, but you can't take it off our exchange, but you can swap it around within our exchange for things. So it's not really like getting your money back, but you'll get first priority when potential recovery proceeds come. Oh gosh, feel bad for these people. 
or you can get 55% of your funds with withdrawals with second priority. So you can get 55% of your funds and you can withdraw it from the exchange, but you have second priority to potential recovery proceeds. So you're kind of screwed either way, essentially. Um, and people are mad uh, saying this is not this is not in the best interest of the ecosystem. Explaining the poll was designed to force customers to choose option A. Because then, you know, you can't withdraw the money, but if you choose option A, you get 55% of your funds, and at least it feels like you have your money, and it says you have your money on the screen of the exchange. But then, with this option, you have first priority to actually get your money, whereas the other option, uh, you could just get stuck with only getting 55% of your funds, because if you're second priority to potential recovery proceeds, uh... <clears throat> there's a chance you might not get your money so yeah it's kind of a lose-lose situation and that's that's the way it goes you know um, if you leave your money with someone else and you trust them to hold your money for you so yeah <sighs> so it's a sad um, one observer called it socialized loss privatized profits and another question why should users with non-stolen tokens be penalized uh, is this even legal? How is that even fair? And yeah, <laughs> and you know, with ZRX, it's like, what are they supposed? To, I mean, what are they supposed to do if they don't have the money? It's like, yeah. Um, so, <laughs> just a lose lose situation all around. But anyway, moving on to more obscure kind of articles. Slovenia becomes first European nation, European Union nation to issue sovereign digital bond. The 30 million euro bond was settled through the Bank of France's tokenized cash system and coordinated by BNP Paribas. So shout out to Slovenia. I, uh, Slovenia has a special place in my heart because my wife is actually half Slovenian. Um, her grandparents immigrated from Slovenia to the U.S., so that is pretty cool. Um, and I've heard great things about Slovenia. I would like to go one day. But uh, basically, they have the four-month notes mature November 25th and carry a coupon of 3.65%. Settlement took place in a wholesale central bank digital currency on Thursday, the Slovenian government said. A wholesale CBDC is a digital token designed for use by financial institutions rather than customers. The ECB completed its first test of the settlement of a wholesale CBDC in May and said it would conduct more trials and experiments over the following months. The first experiment carried out by Austria's central bank looked at the tokenization and simulated delivery versus payment settlement of government bonds in a secondary market transaction against central bank money, the ECB said at the time. These initial transactions and experiments with wholesale tokenized central bank money represent an important stepping stone to greater transparency and efficiency of financial markets with wider technology adoption the slovenian government said while hardly while hardly material and financial markets at the moment i don't this doesn't make any sense i think this is a misquote um but he says we expect the importance of the distributed ledger technology to grow significantly in the following years very cool BNP Paribas acted as a global coordinator and sole book runner, as well as the distributed ledger technology platform operator of Neobonds, its private tokenization platform built with digital assets, DAML, and leveraging Canton blockchain. What the hell is Canton blockchain? <laughs> so yeah, I kind of, that last paragraph, I don't really know what a lot of these words mean. Neobonds, digital assets, DAML, um distributed ledger technology that just means blockchain <laughs> it's just a fancy way to say blockchain um but yeah kind of interesting to see and then this article here qatar revisits crypto stance after ban promises regulations by end of 2024 so more international news qatar is making strides toward establishing a regulatory framework for digital assets Signaling a shift from its previous hardline stance against cryptocurrencies, the wealthy Gulf state banned Bitcoin trading in 2018, 
but recent developments suggest it's cautiously reconsidering its approach. And, uh, you know, Qatar loves money, so it makes sense that they are rethinking their stance on crypto because there is a lot of money in crypto and lots of money is flowing into crypto. So uh, with the final legislation expected in Q4 2024, they have established a digital assets lab to encourage innovation in financial and digital asset sectors. So we're seeing like these governments all over the world. We had uh, Singapore and Ghana and Nigeria and now we see kind of Slovenia a little bit we saw Israel um, all these different governments are now like getting involved in crypto and, and some of the ones I just mentioned I think most of them are trying to they're they're starting these funds oh that we're gonna start a digital asset fund and we're gonna encourage innovation in this stuff and it's like they just want a piece of the pie they're like, we're going to make our own blockchain. Nigeria, their, their blockchain is literally called Nigerium. <laughs> like, you can't make this stuff up. It's crazy. Um, and it's just like, no one wants to use your crappy blockchain. Like, we already have, we have stuff that's being made that works really well. I, it just, yeah, it's weird. Maybe it'll work. I don't know. But the whole point of crypto is to... Uh, have freedom from the government when it comes to money you like like people don't want the government to have such such a say and control over how the money uh, is created and spent etc cetera, etc cetera. so yeah it's like they're kind of missing the whole point and they're just like oh well, well yeah now let's do this and uh yeah so they say the digital asset framework represents a pivotal milestone in our journey towards fostering innovation and growth within Qatar's financial landscape. Uh, Maha Al Saadi, head of regulatory affairs at QFCA, said earlier this year during an interview with Unlock Media, the lab provides a collaborative space for startups and researchers to explore solutions related to digital assets and blockchains. So, however, the Qatar's path to crypto adoption hasn't been smooth. Last May, the Financial Action Task Force accused the country of being too lax on terrorist fundraising and urged the Qatar Central Bank to be more proactive in sanctioning VASPs breaching the crypto ban. I don't know what VASPs means, and they don't really say... <laughs> The, a the FATF report cited 2,007 rejected transactions and 43 closed accounts linked to digital assets, but noted that no formal sanctions were applied. Keep in mind, none of the regulatory ambigu ambiguity stopped Crypto.com from becoming a sponsor of the 2022 FIFA World Cup, which was hosted in Qatar. Uh, the press release for the news even went so far as to say the crypto exchange would be the exclusive cryptocurrency trading platform sponsor of Qatar 2022. Great World Cup, by the way. Some of the best uh, games you know I've seen in the World Cup, despite all the controversy around it being in Qatar. It was pretty awesome. And uh, I love Messi, and Messi won that World Cup, and that was awesome. Despite these challenges, Qatar is moving forward. The central bank has finished building the foundation for its digital currency and plans to test it with local and international banks. So, yeah, who cares, really? <laughs> but, uh, you know, jokes aside, it is, it's like the writing is on the wall that crypto is here to stay. It's getting more mainstream than ever in the way that uh, governments are starting to actually put money and energy and effort into it uh, we're seeing the presidential candidates are now trying to trying to win the crypto vote they're like oh crap there's a lot of people who like crypto and they're going to vote based off literally what's going to be best for crypto uh so yeah we it's uh exciting times things are moving really fast um and yeah i think we're we're in a good spot all right, so real quick, here's an interesting article I just stumbled upon because uh, I realized I was coming to an end of the video and I had not completed the full 30 to 40 minutes that I want to put into every single video. So hit the subscribe, hit the like button if you appreciate the effort I'm putting in. I believe this is day 11 or 12 of a video every day. And uh, yeah, apologies, this was not on time. I'm sure, as you can understand, uh, my wife... My wife, she's pregnant. Uh, but uh, <laughs> yeah, 
So what happens when 1% of Bitcoin holders control 99% of the Bitcoin supply? And this is something we've heard Richard Hart talk about plenty of times, that the top wallets in Bitcoin hold a lot of the supply. So around 1.86% of wallets, over 1 million, hold more than 90% of all total Bitcoin currently in circulation. Known as whales, some of these individuals or entities hold large amounts of crypto. So, and they have a little distribution chart here, and you can see what they're saying is true, uh, which is pretty crazy. So, under 2% of all the Bitcoin, under 2% of wallet addresses hold more than 90% of all the Bitcoin in circulation. Uh, is this good or bad? I don't know. We, you know, Richard Hart talks about uh, centralized entity controlling a lot of the supply is actually good for price, um, but it could limit decentralization in a way, I guess for Bitcoin. I don't know, but uh, Bowler speculates that if the entire Bitcoin supply were to ever be accumulated by a small group of whales, it would change the whole ecosystem. The concentration of 100% of Bitcoin in a few addresses would fundamentally alter the dynamics of the Bitcoin ecosystem, she said. It would centralize control, undermine the core principles of decentralization, and potentially lead to market manipulation, loss of trust, and increased regulatory scrutiny. So, whatever. I am not too worried about it. I think there's better things in Bitcoin out there, even though Bitcoin is kind of the, the golden goose in a way. It is the first first mover advantage it's been around the longest so i think it's probably the maybe the safest bet when it comes to putting money into crypto um but yeah so uh sasha ivanov founder of the waves tech ecosystem said at this stage there are no mechanisms to provide fair distribution and prevent the traditional pareto distribution of wealth where top holders have all the btc he thinks whale addresses having the most supply of a given asset provides them material benefits since they can indirectly control the price and engage in market manipulation. Large holders have the financial means to skew the development in the direction they see fit, he said. It could lead to full centralization of Bitcoin since the community will have no recourse to withstand the financial incentives and will be fully driven by the vision of a cohort of large holders. So... Yeah, I mean, Bitcoin is already centralized in a lot of ways. There's only a few mining companies where you can get your Bitcoin miners from. There's there's like a few huge mining pools that could, you know, they could theoretically come together and change Bitcoin if they wanted to. You know, theoretically, not saying that can happen. But yeah, it's just kind of like whatever. To me, it's just not something I'm going to worry about. And like I said, it's a slow day in the news today. So it's kind of just like, oh my gosh, guys, what happens if this happens? Oh my gosh, what happens if, if oh, oh, that and this? And oh, let's just like be worried about everything. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, money printer go burr, Bitcoin price go up. And that's, that's all I think about. <laughs> so yeah, oh, here's a funny article. Bitfinex hacker Heather Morgan spotted at Bitcoin conference 2024. Heather Morgan, a.k.a. Razzlecon, was at the Bitcoin conference 2024. Um, this is, if you don't remember, there was a huge uh, hack on the exchange Bitfinex uh, for 120,000 Bitcoin back in 2016. And it was this girl and her husband who did it. And this girl had, um, she had like these music videos, these super cringy music videos, um, and it was just really funny. It was like, because when they got tracked down, everyone was like, oh my God, who's the hacker? Who is it? And then it's like this, just like this young girl uh, or woman, like who made really funny rap music videos. So yeah, interesting stuff there. Another reason not to leave your money on a centralized exchange Hold your money in your own crypto wallet. And yeah, apologies, guys. The news today was pretty lame. And uh, the video is late, I know. Uh, but hopefully you got some value out of it. And you can let me know if you did or you didn't. Um, but I will keep you updated on the news for days to come. And yeah, thanks for being here. Hit the like, hit the subscribe. Leave a comment. Let me know what you thought. Um, overall, I think things are looking good. We might have a little more... 
a little more lull in the market. I don't really know if like maybe leading up to the election, we see a bit of volatility, a bit of uncertainty, especially with Joe Biden dropping out. Everyone thought Trump was a shoe in for the presidency. Everyone, everything was bullish on crypto and we're seeing Bitcoin prices looking bullish apparently. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Maybe maybe we get a small fake out and we get some kind of dump leading up to the election. And then post-election, uh, things kind of take off and the Fed is going to lower interest rates potentially this year. And things could really be aligning nicely for uh, crypto holders. But I would just say be careful in these sideways times where not much is going on. It's very easy to... Uh, chase shiny objects. It's very easy to start degening. Uh, obviously, I, I like the uh, Richard Hart Pulse Chain ecosystem. And uh, I'm still holding strong. I think it's going to do well. I still have belief in the ecosystem. And that is kind of my play for this crypto cycle is the RH ecosystem. So yeah, but anyway, Thank you, everybody, for listening. I'm going to get this edited, get this posted, and then I will see you bright and early tomorrow morning on Tuesday. And hopefully we got a little more exciting crypto news. If not, I will find a way to get the video to the full 30, 40 minutes, and we will have lots to talk about. So, yeah. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in, and I will see you tomorrow. Peace out.